Okay, in this short video, I'm going to show you how to create your element tile using a software program called Boxy SVG. This is a graphics uh, design software, a very simple one, uh, and yet sort of the perfect tool for the kind of project that you're about to do. So um, you saw the image of the oxygen uh, tile with its different elements involved. And so I'm gonna walk you through the recreation of that tile uh, using the tools here. So first thing you'll notice is that on the left-hand side, there are a set of six different tools to choose from. Uh, we're gonna go over just a, a few of these for the purpose of this project. And then over on the right-hand side, you'll see another set of tools. Uh, and again, we're gonna only go over a few of these, just enough of, for those uh, that are needed for the project. So first thing I'm gonna do is bring out a text element. Uh, each of you has an element with a name. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be oxygen for me. So I'm gonna click on the A tool, which is our text tool. And I'm gonna click somewhere on the screen where I would want that to appear. So I'm just gonna click right here and I'm gonna type the word oxygen to the box. And uh, I'm gonna need a couple of other things. I think I need the atomic mass unit and I need the element number. So I'm gonna click on the A again. I'll click down here, and I, I believe it's, if I can remember correctly, uh, I think the atomic mass unit is something like that. And one more time, I'll click on the A, and I'll create my atomic number, which is eight. And uh, one more is the, is the gigantic O that's at the top there, so capital O. Now when I wanna move things around the screen, I'm gonna, instead of being in text mode, I wanna be here in my pointer mode because that's what's gonna allow me to pick up an object and move it where I need it to be on the screen. It's also at that point that I can resize the object to be the size that I need it to be. And these are things that you'll have to uh, explore as you, uh, as you make your own. Okay, and now I need to make the actual uh, diagram of the atom. And I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I'm gonna bring out uh, circles. Right over here, this is our shape tool. Yours might look differently than mine. Mine just happens to have been currently chosen on the star. If I click on the arrow, drop down arrow to the right, you'll see, see that I have different shapes. I'm gonna bring out the, uh, the generic circle shape right there. And I can create a, uh, the, the main circle on the outside uh, to start my project. Here's the thing, when you are creating any kind of shape, if you hold down the shift key while you create that shape, it constrains the shape to be an exact circle or an exact square or an exact pentagon, whatever, whatever you're creating. So I'm gonna hold my shift key while I'm dragging this out. And there's my first circle. Now, the way that you saw it, and I'll flash back at this point to the original, you'll notice that I have, uh, it's not really a filled circle, it's somewhat of a, it looks almost like a giant O. And so now when I come back to this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another circle here. I'm gonna hold my shift key. I'm gonna make this one a tiny bit smaller, okay? And just so that you can see the, the difference between these two, I'm gonna use the paint tool up above to change the color. I'm gonna make this red for now, just so that you can see the difference. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my pointer tool on the left because that's what's allowing me to move my objects around on the screen. And I'm going to line these two up. Okay. And I think you'll understand what I'm doing in just a moment. Um, I would like these two to be exactly lined up together. And that's just called alignment. And the way to do that is I have to select them both. And I'm going to use this tool right here, which is arrangement. And using this arrangement, I have various options here, but one of them is this one right here, which is just line up centers, both horizontally and vertically. So I'm gonna click on that, and now I'm ensured that these two are exactly lined up together. I can even show you this. If I were to um, drag one away and, and now select them both, and then go back to align centers, you'd see that it's exactly aligned that way. Okay, so now that I have my inner circle on top of my outer circle, I'm gonna to go to this tool right here, this path tool, and I'm going to subtract. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna subtract the inner circle from the outer circle, and it leaves somewhat of a ring, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing. I, I think I have two of these in the oxygen atom, so I'm gonna click and uh, shift drag a smaller circle, 
and shift drag another smaller circle. I'm going to make go back to my pointer tool and I'm going to make this one red just so that I can distinguish between the two. And as I select them both, I'm going to line up their centers. And I'm going to the path editor and I'm going to subtract. And now I have my inner ring. And as you've already learned, you can now take the two of these if you'd like and you could line up their centers as well. Okay. Uh, one more thing is I need the actual nucleus in there, so I'm going to go in, make a smaller one, hold my shift key. All right, that looks good. And if I need to line these up, I'm going to do that one more time. But I'm not sure if that lined up. Let me try these two here. Okay. There we go. So what I had to do there is I clicked on one and I held my shift key down to click on the second one and then I lined up their centers. Okay, and then the last thing I need to do is create the actual, I'm not sure if you're creating electrons. I think they're electrons. I'm gonna make smaller ones here and I'm just gonna drag them to the appropriate spots for oxygen. Uh, I could copy and paste here. And if you're used to doing Apple C or Command C and then Command V, you can create a second copy. Um, I actually like to use the duplicate tool and that way you do that is I'm, I'm using a mouse right now and if I click the right mouse button on top of uh, an object I can click select duplicate and that'll just create another one for me so I'm going to do that to each one here duplicate and I'm going to create um, eight of these and that will give us our oxygen atom. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to create a, I'm going to make these all black. So I'm going to make sure I'm in my pointer tool. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to go to my color tool and select black. And there you have it. Okay, so we're almost done. The one last thing that you have to do um, move this up a little bit. One last thing you have to do in order for a uh, vinyl cutter or laser cutter to understand these fonts that we just wrote out is we've got to turn these fonts, this text, from text into artwork. And the way we do that is we can select the text and we go back to our path tool and we say convert to path. And what that means just sort of quickly is that that no longer is actually seen as a font. I can't change this letter now. This is actually seen as a circle, uh, as a piece of artwork. And so I can do the same thing. I'm going to hold my shift key down and do it for the rest of these uh, fonts here. I'm going to convert to path. And now all of them are paths. Okay, and I can, I can still continue to resize them and move them around the screen. I just can't type them. I can't type into them anymore because they're pieces of art. Okay, and at the very end, when I'm all done, I go to File, Save, and I give it the name that uh, you'll give it the name that you need to give it in order to turn it into uh, to your teacher. And that's it.